Welcome to your go-to podcast for the pool and spa industry. My name is Tyler Rasmussen. And my name is Greg Biafania. And this is the Pool Chasers Podcast. Hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you so much for joining us today on episode 30 of the Pool Chasers Podcast. Our mission is to help educate and inspire in the form of a podcast. Today, we have a very big announcement. We have officially sold our pool service accounts from Brothers Pool Service and Repair so that we could move into Pool Chasers full time. This was a huge leap of faith for us and was not easy on many levels, but we feel like this is what we are meant to do and really excited for this new chapter in our life. So let's get started. What's going on, Ty? What's going on, Kai? How you guys doing this morning? Doing great. Kind of excited. Yep, doing well, man. It's officially 2019. I'm excited for the future. You know, it's an exciting time around here for sure. Nice. Well, let's dive into this uh, discussion that we got going on today on episode 30. Um, want to talk about our thought process behind transitioning from our pool service and repair business and the decision to move into pool chasers full time. Yeah, we've been doing brothers and pool chasers together full time for a little over a year now. And, you know, both are very demanding of our time. So we were spending, you know, 16 hour days regularly, as well as working till midnight on Wednesdays so that we could get everything we need to done. So we did the best job we could do for both. And, you know, both of them needed so much attention. So we just realized that it was time to make a change. Yeah. So. No, we, we made this decision together just before we went to the International Pool and Spa Show in Vegas that we were you know going to sell the brothers' accounts and jump into Pool Chasers 100%. When we made this decision, we decided to bring Kyle with us, which is a real big piece of you know Pool Chasers. Um, but we wanted him to be there for the event and the Pool Chasers mixer and be a part of it and see what the community was all about. Um, it's kind of funny because you really had no idea what was going on, you know, past any of that did you kyle no i had no clue it was kind of a last minute like hey we know it's last minute but will you go to this show with us and my wife said yes gave me the permission and i was like that's pretty funny because greg and i were like asked you and then like the hour of anticipation from when you were asking your wife we were like oh god please let her say yes because otherwise we're gonna have to tell him right now we don't want to do that (laughs) i mean we also started thinking about you know, when we itemized all the things that we were going to need to do at the show and how difficult that was going to be, just me and Ty. Oh, and yeah. oh my gosh, we actually really didn't even know because we got there and it was a lot for the three of us. <laughs> yes, so it was. Sure. <laughs> we could have used one more monkey in the barrel. That's for sure. <laughs> we did it though. We got it done. Yep. So you knew what was going on with, you know, the mixer and going to the international pool show, which we told you was a, a pretty big deal. But once we got into the other news, which was, you know, we were going to sell off the um, pool service accounts. Were you surprised? I was surprised. I was a little, little uneasy at first because you didn't tell me that I was going on this adventure <laughs> with you for, um, I'd say the conversation went for about a half hour, 45 minutes. And then you're like, oh, we want you to come with us. I was like, Okay, <laughs> that was a close one because we're in the middle of the desert right now, so this conversation can go bad real quick. So I ain't going back to Minnesota. Nope. <laughs> I, I'm i done with snow. I don't want to go back. I'll, I'll, I'll visit, but that's about it. You know, but just in talking about that, you know, the decision just for having you, Kyle, come with us at Pool Chasers was really important because we know you're a hard worker, you care about the industry, and more importantly, um, we could really trust you. We trusted you for a long time at Brothers, and you know it's a huge risk in us doing this anyway, financially, but we know that when you have the opportunity to have somebody on a team that you can really trust and is a hard worker, and you do many other things like you know a lot of the other technical stuff, Um, it's just really important to keep us all together. So, you know, that was a real big part of, you know, kind of making that decision to have you with us. Yeah. So, I mean, you kind of knew about pool chases and what we were doing a little bit, right? But, um, I mean, did it make you feel a little bit better after we had talked, you know, more? After we talked a little bit more, I got a little more background. I got a little more understanding of how important it was to you guys and the reasoning for the transition of, we need to put more time into this. This is important. This is a benefit. And we want you to help us do this. And then all the wheels were turning ever. It was a pretty whirlwind conversation on our way to the trip. Yeah, because I'm sure you could see the the evolution in the podcast. And 
slowly but surely less time was being spent at brothers on mostly on me. I know Ty, Tyler was there every morning with Danian and kind of doing more of that day to day. But I know I felt like I was there less and less. And it probably got to a point where it was like, I don't, is this just, we just going to accept that Greg's not going to be around here anymore <laughs> or you know what I mean? That was, that was the consensus. It was, uh, Greg comes on Monday mornings to bring bagels or donuts for the, uh, meeting that we have. And then, and then we don't see Greg, <laughs> you know, for a long time, it wasn't even so much that we are just working so much and so hard on, you know, everything leading up to the decision to selling, um, brothers, the accounts, um, there was so many different projects that we are working on to make the business better and get the business organized. Um, but never really got an opportunity to talk too much about it. I know you knew about quite a few of those things because you were stopping by, you know, to get, um, input and stuff. Yeah. I kind of had an epiphany today when I was thinking about, you know, when I was writing some of these questions and stuff, like I, I remember now that I can think about it, there was a turning point when we started to work on pool chaser stuff during the day. And then that Wednesday night transferred into like brother stuff. If you remember that, like, yeah. so it used to be like, Oh yeah, we're doing brothers all day long every day. And then now, and then on Wednesday nights we work on pool chasers and then slowly switch to, okay, well, pool chasers is needs our attention during the day. We're doing this all day long. And then like Wednesday night became like, catch up for brothers which was kind of a kind of a weird transition that's yeah. kind of the more i thought about it that's really when the decision became more clear of like all right well yeah I, this is what we're this is what we're working towards you know going full-time at and you know a lot you know for all of you listening don't really understand how you know some of the episodes that we put out are much easier than others but most of the time it's it's a little tricky with the logistics of coordinating with the interviewee and the questions and they want some of these questions taken out and setting up the audio and video and, you know, game plan for the social and making these clips for Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and, you know, editing show notes, uploading it so that it goes on to, you know, SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple podcasts, all these different things. There's so many moving parts in it. And when you combine that, you know, with a pool service and repair business that, you know, is thriving and needs a ton of work too. Um, anybody in their right mind is gonna, you know, <laughs> choose one or the other because you can't do both. You know, even if I, I think even not having, you know, kids or the lifestyle that we have, it would be really difficult to be good at, at both. Mm -hmm. I think one of those is going to fall off regardless. You know what I mean? Yeah. They both definitely started to demand a lot more attention. So, you know, I think at that point, Kyle, when we told you in the van or in the truck that I think you started to really kind of understand a little bit of the standpoint, you know, stand still where we were at, you know, and with, okay, there's, there's all these issues and problems and stuff we need to give attention to for brothers. And then there's all this stuff we have moving with pool chasers. So I think we explained, you know, there's a lot when you're the owners that you don't, tell your employees or your people working for you and you know you got a little bit more behind the scenes <laughs> conversation at that point i got a little more insight into the reasoning for everything which yeah. made it easier for me to make the decision yeah when we talked about yesterday you know there there's certain problems there's certain situations in the industry that you have to deal with every day that aren't going to go away so you know you have to prioritize your time and figure out a way to handle those things for the brother's business. But then Portage just throws all the other curveballs at you and it's so much different. Yeah. And especially opportunities. We didn't expect um, this to do as well as fast in terms of people, you know, wanting to be on the podcast or just people looking for advice. And we love that. I think we love that so much that that was a big reason why we started to want to do this full time that we could be you know, sort of a, a main resource for people to come for information because that, you know, it's a really good feeling to be able to help people because um, we know how much we always talk about how much we wish that that had been around when we first started. 
Um, but let's get into Wahanin. Wahana. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about the the mixer. So that's what second day in, I think, in being in Vegas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, how did your mindset change after just that experience? Once we, the initial shock of getting everything set up and ready to go, and the butterflies kind of went away a little bit once it was. You just really, got in a groove, yeah. Really going, you know. Okay, people are enjoying themselves. I don't have to worry as much. This isn't. It's not too crazy. I mean, it was crazy, but it was manageable. Um, then I could sit down and talk with people that I'd never met before, maybe met once and not really talked with. Like, yeah, this is Kyle. He's our service manager. And then you guys talk business. And I'm like trying to figure out who they are, what they do, and. Um, but sitting and talking with them, it really kind of opened my eyes to the just the kind of family mentality that pool chasers has become of uh, just kind of sharing information, getting to know each other, um, talking about life, not just not just pools and helping each other out. It's been a lot of a lot of fun seeing that back and forth. And at the mixer, it was great just to sit and talk with people. Yeah. And I, we were all so pumped on it. We did a whole episode on it, actually. <laughs> but, you know, it was the, it was the first time ever being in the pool industry that really felt like there was a change coming. Like Absolutely. a really big change was going over everybody in that room that was there for the pool chasers mixer. And the future just looked incredibly bright. You could see that light at the end of the tunnel, which would be if you're confused on, you know, the industry that you're in and what I'm supposed to be doing, you felt like you were a part of something now. And if you listen to the podcast, you would understand that we are going to be a resource for you. And we want to try and figure out as much as we possibly can. If you let us know what it is that you want to know about your business, we want to talk about it on the podcast. There's a million different topics that we can talk about. And we want to be that resource and use the podcast as a platform for you to listen on so that we can we can do that stuff. It's not for landscapers. It's not for HVAC. It's not for anything else. It's everything inside of what we do here in the pool and spa industry. And, you know, just feeling that that change coming, um, man, it just it really it, I think it really helped because we had made the decision already that we wanted to, you know, stop with the pool service and repair and do pool chasers full time. But it felt like, you know what? hundred percent. This is the right move. This is, this is where we need to be. This is the right place for us. Yeah. It was really like the stars kind of aligned with the decision that we made. And it was, you know, it helped a lot going into that. Like you said, going into the two, going into the international pool and small show with the mentality of, all right, this is what we're going to do full time. Whether that starts, you know, next week or whether it starts in six months, we, didn't know at that point, but we knew we had to take a whole different mental challenge and mental game to this arena sort of per se, and, you know, take the time to do it correctly. And we had to change the mindset. We talked to you, Kyle, about like the mindset of, well, if this is what we're doing full time, then we need to go at it a hundred percent and not worry about brothers while we're here. You know, and that was the first time ever that we've ever really, I mean, I still had to deal with Thane in a little bit in the mornings and stuff, but like we really took our minds off of brothers and focused on pool chasers for the first time. And that was a really big step. And it was pretty much a confirmation at the mixer of like, yep, that's it. This is it for sure. Yeah, definitely. Like you didn't, you didn't have to think too much about anything else. It was just like, this is like prime focus and being kind of a, a resource and education source for people. Yeah. It was, I give up like maybe the first hour of my day to get all the text ready to go. And then it was all pool chasers unless I got some sort of emergency. Yeah, I guess so. I, I didn't, I realized you, you probably dealt with brothers a little bit more. I dealt with brothers <laughs> exponentially more than you did on, yes, this, on yes, that trip. But, yes. <laughs> but it freed you guys up to do pool chasers 100% mm-hmm. and focus on that because mm-hmm. I was able to pull some of that burden off. And you've, been, you've been pulling burden off for a long time now. So <laughs> we appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. And we'll, we'll talk more about it, but. You know, there was for anybody on the team that might have been frustrated with anything going on. There's so many things that we definitely understand. It was just hard to relay that information to, you know, the pool service technicians 
and the repair mechanic and things like that. It was really hard sometimes to find the time to tell them what we are working on and the things that were going on. And I, you know, we always talked about that. I don't think we're going to get there quick enough, you know, how much it would cost to do all that. And we'll get into that. But, you know, I don't just because you said burden, I don't, you know, it wasn't a burden. You know what I mean? It was that was what we had to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? I didn't mean burden in a negative way. I meant burden in as a it's something you had to deal with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. didn't have to deal with it. Yeah. You could totally focus elsewhere. And it definitely was not it was not easy. It's not easy, I think, knowing that you're gonna get yourself into something completely different. And when problems arise, it's like, oh my gosh, man, like just <laughs> You know what I mean? Oh like, yeah. yeah. Totally, totally understand that. Yeah, I've definitely screamed into a couple of pillows, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Can you just stop already? Good lord. Like <laughs> Can one thing go right today? No. No. But, <laughs> but it was cool. You know, the the, the mentality and the, the positivity in the room, I think, really was reflected. There was not any negativity going on. It was all positive. Everybody was laughing, and you could tell everybody was having a good time. And it was the first time, like you said, that we've seen that kind of flip, you know, from our going into SEP and seeing cranky dudes, you know, going through, like, you know, all the stuff, not being able to approach them for knowledge to, you know, how now we have the Facebook group and all the positivity in there. Like it, it definitely changed the whole gear, you know? Yeah, definitely. The Facebook group is just <laughs> insane. You can't, you take your eyes off it for one day, two seconds. It's just so much going on in there. I mean, you got to pay close attention to it, which, you know, can be tricky at times because we're still in the middle of, you know, making sure everything is good with the, uh, you know, transition mm -hmm. um, to Aquaman. But um, it's, it's much more positive. Nothing will ever be a hundred percent. And we understand that we get just as frustrated at situations. I think we need to understand, or we do understand more is that that is a problem, but it seems like it's been a problem for a long time. How do we fix it? Mm -hmm. That's where, that's really where we need to be at where it's stop bitching and complaining about that. Cause you've been complaining about that for five, 10, 15, 20 years. What are we doing about it? Yeah, let's make a change. It's 2019. There's some serious advances in the world telling me that we can't put our brains together and figure this out because if we do, it's going to be uh it's going to be huge for thousands of people. Yeah, I think you got to take the approach which we have of okay, you know, I was at that guy's point one time in my life and that's kind of where pool chasers that's the design, you know, we we are at the beginning struggling not being able to find information. So every situation that, you know, somebody posts or every, you know, every post that somebody posts, it's like, Hey, can somebody help me with this? That's my approach to it. Every time is, you know, Oh yeah. I remember when I was at that point, like I could probably help this guy out. Not you idiot. Like you should already know that, you know, you've been doing this for a year already. Who cares if he's been doing it for a year? Like you don't know his area, what he goes through, his family life, his, you know, struggle, his strengths, his weaknesses. Like you don't know any of that. Like, where is it? You're not, it's not your, you know, your place to judge him for all that. What you should be doing is like, oh yeah, I totally remember I went through that and this is what I did. And that's what I think the Facebook group has really shifted to is like that mentality. And we also talked about yesterday in particular that sometimes you just need to be a realist and understand that the resources that we have here in Scottsdale are damn sure not the same as they are mm -hmm. in <laughs> another state or a little city that you live in. Yeah, there might be a lot of pools, but they're not, there might not be, you know, a distribution center around the corner and there might not be people in there that can help you the way that we've gotten helped. And you might not have been brought up where you understand that Google is your best friend and YouTube is a huge resource for how to do some things and how to network with people. Sometimes you just, you have to understand that we don't like, some people just don't know all that stuff. And if they found pool chasers and they can get on there and say, wow, like, I'm glad I found this. I'm going to ask some questions. That is our part in how we're going to grow together. Cause one day you're going to have a question and there's going to be somebody probably that, you know, knows damn near everything and they're going to help you out. That's what I like about that. Especially the pool chasers Facebook group is it seems to become one of those where you could just go and 
uh, I don't know this or we've got people they're like, hey, I'm in Texas. We got people from we got people from all over on the Facebook. It's not just here in Arizona. And they're like, this is where I'm at. This is what I'm dealing with. Anybody around dealing with the same problem and you get people chime in. I've seen it a couple times. So they're like, uh, I don't know anything about it, but I know someone that lives there that has mm-hmm. a pool company that here, reach out to this person, did it. And it's very helpful and very, I've already learned stuff on it. I didn't know already. Yeah, just I was, from when, reading through it. When yeah. I was in, when I was in Hawaii, I met with those the cherry pools guys. They were saying, you know, that they don't even have, they have, they don't have a rep at all and they don't have any of the trainings that we have. So like they're pretty much out on their own trying to learn stuff. They have no help, and they're, the only SEP is on the main island. So the main island has to ship stuff over to their island, and like all that. Like there's wow. that's difficult. You know what I mean? To to be able to, they have to go buy from. It's not Leslie's, but it's like a store like Leslie's is where they buy their supplies. ABC, no. ABC store, ABC store, <laughs> ABC store now now store. <laughs> Oh, now, that would be awesome. Now we got your pumps, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, not ABC store, but some other similar store to Leslie's like on the on their island that they have to go buy from. But, you know, that's crazy to me to think there's not even some type of distribution center there. They just give what they're, you know, take what they're given and, and do the best they can. Like, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. So that's why it's even more important that we have this and we have the right people on the show and we're able to create things and, you know, maybe processes and guidelines and different things that you can go off to structure your business better. So that's going to be, you know, even, even better for people that have really limited resources. For sure. Let's kind of talk about the drive back a little bit, because I think one thing that we've really been trying to focus on here since we didn't do enough with brothers is planning and organizing. And I know Greg, you in particular have working on some projects here that are going to help us stay organized, which is totally awesome. And, you know, we, we definitely wanted to go into this whole idea with a plan and we took time together on the way back to kind of discuss those things. You know, we wanted to really focus on the team, make sure that they were still taken care of. But I remember, and I think Kyle, you and I talked about this too, was once we knew (laughs) we were going full time, it was a very difficult mindset to still give brothers 100% 100% of your attention are still treated in a way that nobody, you know, other people didn't notice. Yeah, that was uh, especially a harder part for me when it was, it seemed like the problem was like, oh, this isn't going to be a quick fix. This is going to be a, I'm going to have to do this and this and this is going to take a while. And it was hard not to look at the technician and go, I'm probably not going to end up dealing with this. This is going to go to someone else keeping a mentality of, oh, yeah, okay, let's let's see what we can do and try to fix the problem as quickly as possible just for them, you know, because I wanted to still be there for them, obviously. It's not like I'm like, "Eh, screw you guys. I'm moving on. Yeah, no, we definitely didn't want that approach. And it was it was definitely a difficult mentality at going there every day with. All right. I need when I'm while I'm here, I need to give my full attention to this was super difficult (laughs) but we've also been in the business of things not working and fixing it and Mm -hmm. when you know problems would arise there would not it wouldn't be necessary anymore to maybe note it but didn't really need to make a process or a plan to fix it you know what i mean yeah yep it was just like just hope this doesn't keep happening because (laughs) it's getting it's getting more difficult as the day goes on and at that point we didn't really know we didn't have anybody interested. We didn't talk to anybody about it. So we really didn't know whether it was going to be a week or you a know, year. six months or a year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that was that was the hardest part was like, okay, well, now Greg and I still have to focus on brothers. And at the same time, we need to look for a way out and, you know, not way out fully, but look for options on, you know, transitioning these accounts somewhere. So um, it was very difficult to do. And I think – You know, some of our listeners that have gone through some of that, you know, selling routes, buying routes, things like that, definitely understand because you don't want your team to know that something's changing because you want to keep them happy and you you need those pool accounts taken care of. So there's there's multiple aspects of that and it was it's definitely difficult. But we did our best to to treat them well. I think we did pretty decent at it. Maybe we'll hear from them 
some episode down the road, but you know, we really tried to focus on that. You know, it was very important that the team felt taken care of still. And then we had Thanksgiving week and Christmas week coming up. So that was got thrown in there as well. So, yeah. And I, for anybody listening to this is, this was not our intentions like nope. to build up a, you know, pool service and repair business and have so many accounts and get out. That was not our intentions. I mean, there's a few customers within the last six months that we took on that specifically asked me when doing the bid, um, will you be here like in the next, you know, few months or a year or whatever, or are you just gonna, you know, you're just putting on a show and then you're gone. You know what I mean? I was like, no. And I like a hundred percent, you know, meant that like, no, we're not, I don't have plans on selling our business because they had been through that before yeah. where they had a pool company and then they sold their pool. Another company took it. Somebody sold that and they just kept going through different people and they wanted consistency. So we knew that was important and we knew like, no, you're going to have the same technician. I can't promise that, but it'll be the same, you know, business. We have the same, you know, problems that every other business has, which is if the person doesn't work out. They're not going to be here. Isn't right. that what you want? You want the <laughs> you best want person the best for the one. job. Um, but I think that was important. I mean, brothers was our baby. We treated it that way. Um, we never, never once thought for that we were going to sell it, which was insane thought process. I remember the day we came together and we were like, Hey, I want to talk to you about something. And you had been thinking about it too. I was like, I, I don't know how this came about, but you know, I really think that we should highly consider, you know, selling off the accounts. That was a, that was a weird, weird day. Cause that definitely was not ever part of the process. Not even when we started pool chasers, that was nowhere near on our minds. We just started pool chasers with the idea to help out. And it was going to be like a side project, fun project, you know, but it just took off and it was never, you know, I don't think we would have approached brothers the same way had we thought at the end game was selling. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, we got to the point where it was, you know, cause it got more and more clear that one of these has got to go. It's if it's got to be pool chasers, that would really suck for us and a lot of other people that depend on this and look forward to it. But this is we can't keep doing this. You know what I mean? And it's really difficult because you have to have this switch in your brain all the time. It's like, oh, brother's pool service mode, whoop, pool chasers podcast mode, whoop, daddy mode, whoop husband mode you have all these different hats that you have to wear throughout the day and you it just gets really really difficult and we knew that one of these was just one of them had to go before we wrecked both of them you know you give them just a little bit on both and then they both just tank and i know there's some people out there that are just they're crazy good at it and they could maybe do it i don't know too many but it is a it's a tricky thing for sure I think we did a really good job at it. It just got to a point and we, I could feel it and see it. And same thing, you could feel it and see it was that brother started to go down a tiny bit and a tiny bit more and a tiny bit more. And then it was kind of like, okay, that's not, that's not okay. So what do we do to change that? And we had to make a choice. Yeah. And to be honest, you know, I've said this many times, Kyle, but you were, the probably the biggest reason why we we're able to do what we do. You know what I mean? Just yep. knowing that was a great peace of mind. I mean, that's obviously why you're here with us at pool chasers, but for anybody listening, you need to find yourself a Kyle. You need to find somebody that, you know, you can trust, um, is willing to learn new things and just get after it no matter what it takes, because, you know, we can't do what we need to do unless we have, you know, a manager that's going to, that's going to keep everything moving while we need to do what we need to do, whether it's brothers or pool chasers. Cause Mm -hmm. even being a full-time and brothers, you know what I mean? There's, you have to work on the business. It can't always be inside the business trying to, you know, do all these different things. You got to work on the business because there's so many different things that happen. So, um, yeah, putting people in the right places and being able to delegate is 100% the best thing we did. And the best thing you can do is, okay, I need to take care of other things and you need to take the time to find somebody you trust like Kyle and say, okay, I need you to please take this off my plate, to please take this off my plate. Even with Sherry, when she was freaking awesome in the office, 
like she would be like, well, that's not your job. Like you guys don't need to be doing that. Like let me do that. Like that's that was shout insane. out to Sherry if you're listening. <laughs> you rock. <laughs> that was insane to me at first. Was like oh 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 okay. Like here you go. You know like I don't know what I, now I can go do this thing. Well, that's pretty cool. You know so learning to delegate and get somebody you trust and get a team that you trust. And we talked about it all the time. You know the EOS system that we love um, from Traction. And you know I think I just talked to Hal yesterday. He's actually implementing that whole entire thing on his team starting today, which is pretty crazy. Like he, oh, wow. he, he opted into the whole program and like he's believes in it that much. And we talked with him about that on his episode, but like the EOS system of, you know, the main thing is putting people in the right places. And then when the people are in the right places, you can so you can succeed in Excel. Yeah. It's crazy how basic and back to the fundamentals that book is, but it's, it's spot on. I mean, it, he says it in the book. It, it works on every size and level of a business. Yep. And if you think you're not at that level yet, because of some of the things they talk about, it's it's really good because it'll it'll help you for the future. You'll know what to look for when you're hiring people and different things like that. But mm -hmm. that is really cool that people have taken the time to open up that book or at least listen to it because there's uh, some gold in that for sure. Yeah, I know. He told me that several of his you know, people in that group he's in that are millionaires, several of them use that EOS system. Like that's the, you know, the di diagram of how to be successful. So it's a nice. pretty, pretty cool one. Um, you know, they're not a sponsor, but might as well be. <laughs> <laughs> I mention that book. <laughs> Thanks, Traction. No, I'm just kidding. I think they've made enough money. <laughs> Right. <laughs> so once we got back, we had a lot of work to do. I mean, it was very important to us to find a partner that would take care of our team. You know, first and foremost, that was really important that um, they would actually take our guys on and make sure that they got taken care of uh, even better than we took care of them. Um, so we also wanted to work with somebody that we felt had the same morals and high standards that we did and how we took care of the customers. We knew that there were only a few companies that had the capability of taking on our team in the amount of customers that we needed to transfer over. So Chad from Aquaman was our first choice because we felt he and his team um, had very similar goals as we did and service the same area. We had reached out to him and had several meetings before we settled on a deal that would work for everyone. It was pretty crazy because he came to the mixer as well. Um, we had barely even spoken before. And, um, yeah, it was just nice to actually talk and get to know him because he was much different than, you know, than we thought or knew. Yeah, definitely. We, it was a perfect fit, man. We learned a viable lesson, you know, which we've been learning since starting pool chasers was to never really judge a book by its cover or judge them from what you hear from other companies. You know, you hear that many times, but it's so true and it's such a valuable lesson to learn because we've heard, you know, different things about Chad just being a businessman and not, we didn't really think he was super involved in the business based on what we heard, but because of our interactions with him and then our talks with him, that was completely opposite. Like he knows every in and out, you know, every little nook and, nook and cranny of his business. And that really surprised us, you know, a little bit was like, Oh wow. Like this guy really knows what he's doing. He really knows what he's talking about. He really knows his team. You know, that was, uh, we learned a pretty good lesson in that. And we hope all of you guys listening, you know, really, no matter who it is, you know, don't judge them by what you hear from other people. Don't judge them by what you see. You know, if you have a problem or want to know something about somebody, go up to them and ask them, talk with them, figure out what their business, you know, if they're willing to share, you know, go in there and get their, you know, listen to their ideas, listen to what they do with their team. That's the whole idea. And it's really it was really cool mind opening to us. Yeah. And we talked about this yesterday. You know, I feel like a lot of people have the mindset that there's a fleet of trucks. They got a nice building. They got this. They got that. That that must mean that they suck or they're a sellout or some kind of weird thing comes over you where you, you know, feel like you need to say those things. You know what? That's actually the guy you should be talking to because he's got something <laughs> yeah. figured out. Somehow he has the credit with a bank to be able to do that or the cash to make that happen. Are you mad because his business is actually making a profit? The more you learn about business and you see people with these things, those are the kind of guys and gals that I want to be my mentor 
because they've got something figured out. You know what I mean? You don't just, people don't just give you a building and don't just give you trucks and don't just give you a reverse osmosis, you know, setup. You don't just get those things. It's not cheap making people employees. You know, there's a full on staff over there. But once we were talking to him and just how much he cares about educating the team, even I think he was going to, he's hiring somebody that solely just does mm-hmm. education there full time. Yep. And, you know, the company vehicles and making sure that, you know, you put in your time here. This is what we're looking for. And if you want to move up, this is how you do it. So there's like a plan for all these different things. So there would be no point for anybody to do all of that if they were up to something else. Right. There's <laughs> there's better things to do with your time. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is not a this is not an easy business, you know, to be in. Um even down to if he understood that the type of people that were cleaning pools might want to do it part time and might only want to clean 30, 40 pools a week because they're in college or they're doing, you know, night classes and things like that. So actually, you know, has a route where it's just this amount of pools and you can do what you need to do. Um, you just need to be trained, which we can train you I mean, probably better that, you know, I already know some stuff. But yeah. um, I just thought that that was really cool really getting to figure people out so that, you know, you can have a sustainable business. Yeah. You feel that figure out a way to kind of tailor the business to the talent, you know what I mean? Which is something I look up to very much. I think that's impressive. And same with Golki pools, you know, in that meeting we had with them, like that's what they try to do. They, they tailor their business to the talent you know, you want somebody that's talented, you want somebody that's good, you want somebody that cares, but maybe that person can't do 70 pools a week. Maybe he can only do 40 pools. But to me, <laughs> that's much more valuable than somebody that can do 70 pools and do it half ass. Yeah. So. And we have a lot of respect and understand too, because we knew the point that we were at and making the jump to being where he's at is is a ton of work and it's very, very expensive to get to that level. And definitely have a ton of respect for that and just and just doing it the right way. There's a lot of corners you can cut, I think, in this industry. And you didn't, you know, cut very many of them. Right. For <laughs> sure. Well, he took, you know, he took on the whole team, which is very important to us. You know, he, it was very valuable for us to pick somebody that could do that. We wanted everybody to keep their jobs if possible. We wanted to get a, as clean of a transition as possible without you know, anybody losing their job. So, you know, we, they took all the technicians on all the customers transferred, you know, most of the customers got the same technician, which was actually much more valuable than we even thought because we had contacted each one of them, which we'll get into, but we, you know, I got so much feedback from the customer like, Oh, it's the same technician. Nothing's changing. Like, Oh, I'm cool then whatever. You know, I think if it would, if we had just sold the accounts and it was somebody brand new, a lot more of them would have cared much more, you know, but they know the integrity of our company and the integrity of our guys. And they could tell, you know, that we, we, uh, we reassured them that that was going to continue. Yeah. I felt really confident in the deal just because it seemed like everybody was winning. You know, we got to step away and do pool chasers full time, the technicians, um, you know, cause they weren't all employees. So it was nice that everybody would become an employee and get health benefits and get a company vehicle. Um, and, and it just, advancements, you know, he had yeah. mentioned that, you know, a lot of our team had mentioned like that they want to do more things, which we weren't in the position to do. Yeah. So with them, their company being like a full on, you know, company, he has opportunities for them to grow. And, you know, if they prove themselves, then, you know, they can move up in the company, which was something we couldn't really offer. Yeah. It was very important for all of us to kind of win in the deal in, in a certain way. So, you know, we had to move into pool chasers full time. Chad got to take over the accounts, build his business. All the technicians got taken care of as best we could have taken care of them in that situation. And, you know, everybody kept their jobs and it was just definitely important to us that everybody came out on top. And one thing I remember we talked about with Chad was he thought pool chasers was so cool. That's why he came to the mixer. He was really impressed with everything going on there. And he thought that pool chasers provided a lot of value for the listeners and for the growth in the industry. And he was very supportive of the fact that we were going to move on to something else as opposed to getting out of the business that made a big difference to him and a big difference to 
um, his thought process on like what, you know, helping us get out quicker, which was good. We wanted to get out, you know, fairly quick if we could, because we knew going into the new year that it was going to take a lot of work to transition. So, you know, it kind of helped a lot that he was buying into the whole process. So, you know, he saw something we were doing for the industry and, you know, he was very excited about it. So I want to kind of jump into, you know, the benefits of listening to podcasts, why they're perfect for the pool industry, why we thought this process was going to work a year ago, and why we've seen so much success in the way that it has grown even more than we ever thought. You know, it's it's getting harder and harder, you know, every year to open a book and read. You know, people, you know, they don't have to say no to something else to say yes to a podcast. So you can go on a run at the beach. You can drive in your car. You can walk the dog, you can be cooking dinner and you can listen to a podcast. Whereas you cannot do that reading a book. You can't do that reading a vlog or blog. You know, you can't do that trying to, you know, do something where you actually physically have to read. It's an advantage to podcasts all around to where you can do them at your time, your convenience. And it's something that we saw a year ago that we thought was very good for our industry because we have so much windshield time, so much backyard time that when we are in those backyards, why not do something or learn something that can educate you in your industry? You know, whether you're a technician to a business owner, there's a little you can learn from every podcast. That's what we love about podcasts so much is that, you know, you and I both and Kyle's starting to get on the bandwagon. We we take part of different podcasts and you find what works for you. You don't have to pull out the whole podcast. You don't take the podcast as like the Bible. You just take pieces out of each one that you're like, oh man, that's a really good part about business. That'll apply to my business. That's a really good thing about chemistry. Like I can, when I'm in the field, I can see that, you know, oh, that's going to benefit me a lot when I go there or like anything we do on marketing, you can say, oh, I see like getting the Yelp page lined up, you know, for the free stuff can help me, you know, even if you don't believe in Yelp fully, like you can, you know, you can make yourself look better on there. Like you can pick and choose what works best for you. That's why the stories and experiences work because there's successes and failures. It helps you avoid failures, you know, that if you thought you were thinking about doing something that somebody already failed at and you heard that before you tried it, then you can definitely, you know, avoid that failure for yourself. So you get to choose, pick and choose all that. And, you know, we really do our best to try and give the listeners what they want. We've ran the campaigns to get feedback forms. We are always listening to what people say. When I went to Maui and talked to those guys, I asked them specifically, like, what they struggle with, what we could help with. As us as the host and as us three as pool chasers, we're learning and listening every time to be like, and that's, I think what has changed in the way we think is when we hear a problem, instead of trying to fix it for brothers, we're trying to fix it for every company. So we're, we're hearing, okay, you know, we hear 17 times that finding employees is difficult or, you know, that and that's something we need to try to maybe record a podcast on or get somebody on that has had success with that. You know, like how, like how Denbar with Patriot Pools, like he does a very good job at keeping his employees or Golki Pools, like those kind of things help a lot. You know, we're always listening, always trying to make the content better. And, you know, people just really have grasped onto that concept. And, you know, there's something about podcasting that, you know, people just really love. Uh, I think it, what makes it easy to listen to is, People really love listening to trusted sources. Like we're going out there and finding these people that are like leaders of their field or they've been doing it forever or they just really grasp what they're doing, whatever they're mastering. And it's nice to be able to go, okay, this guy, listen to the intro and go, oh, yep, he definitely knows what he's talking about. This is worth my time. I can throw this on and go and do my work or go do my workout or whatever, and I can learn, expand my knowledge base coming from a professional, a guy like Greg Garrett, who's been doing it forever right? and just has this knowledge that's ridiculous. And if you're going to talk about water chemistry, why not talk to the leader of, you know, water testing equipment, which is Taylor Technologies, Exactly. and you have the leader of education, um, which we did, you know, many episodes with, 
But, you know, you're 100 percent right on all of that, that, you know, why not go to the source and get the information? Because we all struggle with it when we ask somebody a question and it, they give their opinion like, yeah, well, it says that in the manual or it says that there. But this is the way you should do it, you know, yeah. and sometimes, you know what I mean? It's nice to just like get it from the source or the guy who wrote the book. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, that guy knows a thing or two. Yeah, that helps. <laughs> For sure. I think one of our favorite things about podcasts is getting to hear things you don't normally hear anywhere else. We talk about things that are a little bit different. Um, we talk a lot about early beginnings and how their past has shaped who they are today. I get We get a lot of uh, comments on how people open up a lot on our show and like even other podcasts I've seen it too or listened to it as well where it's like, oh, well, these guys are being real people and sharing their expertise. So it's just kind of interesting to hear the different ways yeah. people communicate and it, people end up just being real with you. They end up opening up quite a bit. It's really cool hearing their story because you wouldn't normally hear that anywhere else. I mean, if you ran into I always use this in a, as an example, but if you ran into, you know, Fred Schwer, the VP of sales with Pooler X and you ran into him at the show, he's an amazing dude, but he's not going to tell you, that he play, he got a scholarship for college football and did all these different things. He has a really cool, fun story, and we got to hear all of it, you know, here on the podcast. And you can't really get that anywhere else, and that's why we listen to, you know, a lot of other po podcasts is because you get those behind the scenes sort of discussions, and that's what we're searching for. It's like what what is it that, you know, especially with actors, I think a lot of the different podcasts we listen to and how they got their acting career and they grew up really poor. And it was just, man, like their parents saw something in them, like they were funny or had this charisma and they got them into, you know, plays and different things like that. And it's just, it's really cool when you hear somebody's story and it might sound like yours and it could lead to maybe, um, maybe a different path than you thought. It's kind of motivating. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, if I hear a story of somebody that kind of had the same sort of upbringing I did, it's kind of motivating to know that, you know, just because you see somebody successful doesn't mean that they've had a perfect life from the very beginning. Well, you I know think what, what I mean? a lot of people forget is, which is cool about the podcast, because they talk about, like you said, actors or things, they sh they're talking about their struggles in the beginning, how they went to ni 95, you know, castings before they got this one break. You right. Know, you don't know how to think about that. Like most people see that person like the Kardashians or something like they're huge, but there's a lot of stuff, a lot of heartbreak, a lot of problems, a lot of issues, a lot of sacrifice, a lot of sacrifice yeah. along the way that got them to that point. I think it's very easy in a society of that we live in now to see that people, to see those people and be jealous of them or see them and be, you know, oh, that guy got that given to him, but you don't really see the 10 years of the really hard work that he did to get there. And nobody appreciates that. But that's the cool part about hearing their backgrounds and their stories. And it helps validate those by saying, okay, well, this guy is at where I'm at, you know, ten, where I was at 10 years ago. And then you can relate to that and be like, all right, well, I can get to that point then, you know, hopefully sooner than 10 years, but I can get to like, you know, that point at one point in my life. Yeah. I think everybody that's been on the show has a has a really cool story. Mm -hmm. It's definitely not the story I would have expected. No. And I'm always really surprised that some would open up so much. You know what I mean? It's uh it's yes. definitely cool. Very so, relatable. Yeah. So we're super excited for the future of the podcast. Um, you know, pool chasers, the whole entire community means everything to us and we want to bring it as much value as possible. Um, since we'll be doing this full time, Pool Chasers is an independent podcast. We are depending on all of you to help uh, donate to our Patreon. Patreon is a membership platform that helps creators get paid for their content. And if the podcast has helped you in any way, we would really appreciate your support by donating what you can and um, you know what you think the podcast is worth to you. Because this is not the equipment we have, the space that we have, the time that we invest in this and all the people we talk with. It's it's difficult on a shoestring budget, especially when this is what you're going to be doing full time. But we believe in our hearts that this is where we were meant to be. And it's going to make your business better. I don't care what you do. This is going to make your business better because we see so many 
big companies that even ask us how should we brand ourselves or how should we market our company or how should we do this? How, how are millennials thinking? How should we hire people? And, you know, because of, you know, what we know, we know who to go after and we know what to talk about on these platforms. And we want to be, we want to be the hub for resources for all the things that you need. There's so many elements of, you know, our business. You know what I mean? You should be tracking, you know, if you want to do well on social media, you should be tracking, you know, the types of engagement that you get. What kind of comments are you getting? Are you not responding to them? Is somebody messaging you about, hey, that was a really cool setup. How do I get one of those at my house? I like that you guys are doing automation. How do I do that? It seems that that's your niche. How do I get in that? You know, so it's really important for us to get on here and discuss what our best business practices for what we do in the pool and spa industry. Um, you know, with that being said, we do support other podcasts and creators because, you know, we've learned so much from them and what they have to offer. So, you know, it's really only right. So there'll be a tier system starting at $5 and each one will offer a little something extra or different just to say thank you from us. But we're really excited because each Patreon member we receive will be added to our supporter wall in the studio. We wanted to think of something fun in a way for all of you to be a part of what we do right here in the studio. So we have designated a wall for all of our supporters that donate through Patreon. And, you know, if we get a picture of you or, you know, whatever uh, photo you want to send, we'll put you up on the wall and you'll be right here uh, watching over us while we <laughs> record each podcast <laughs> episode. And we, we think that's super cool. You know, we we're talking a lot about how it'd be nice to just how do we get, you know, the the community involved in, uh, you know, just the podcast? Obviously, it's going to be really difficult to have every single one of you on the show. Hopefully, you know, we're going to do our best to have as many um, on here. But being on the wall, I think, would be a really cool way. And it'd be nice to just kind of look over and uh, see you all over there watching us. Yeah. And there's a, you know, we like you said, we donate to different Patreons ourselves. Like, you know, it's it's really cool to be a part of something and you get, you know, search bonus content, you get discounts on a product, you can get certain things like that. Yeah. So once again, we are depending on your support. And the only way we can continue to run this podcast, because it is a private podcast, nobody else is funding this. We do have some sponsorships that will come and go, but that is definitely not enough to, um, you know, pay all three of us to just do this and support our family. So we're really depending on you all to really kind of step in and help us out and just keep this podcast alive. Um, it's really probably one less for me anyway. It's one less Starbucks. If I was on a $5 tier plan, it's one less Starbucks, you know, a month. in a month and, uh, you know, be good to go or a lunch or breakfast in the month. Um, but anything you can possibly do would help out tremendously. Even if you can do 20 to $50 a month, I know that sounds like a lot, but we're going to put everything we possibly have into this podcast and making it so that you can run a better business and make it a profitable business that you can market the best you can possibly do. And we're going to have the best people on the show so that we can have um, some really good resources for you all. We do have a long road ahead of us. Can you all agree on that? Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have a long road ahead of us and we're really excited about this and just, you know, creating the best swimming pool and spa industry podcast possible for you all. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for listening and the support. We truly appreciate your time and your ear. If you have any questions, please email us at poolchasers.info at gmail.com. Please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And check out the Facebook group if you have not yet. It's awesome in there. You'll love it. So thank you guys so much. This podcast is brought to you by Jobber. If you guys have not checked out Jobber yet, please do so. They're a great software solution for your business. You can go to getjobber.com backslash poolchasers. That's getjobber.com backslash poolchasers for a 20% off for your first six months and 14-day free trial. See you out there, pool chasers. chasers.